娘子，救命呐、啊、！April 10, 1933. Peking police-run psychopathic hospital. Housewife, 30 years old. The patient's way of speaking has become peculiar. She arranges her speech into short sentences, as in Chinese opera. Multiple suicide attempts. Diagnosis: psychosis, manic depressive. October 8, 1940, Peking, neuropsychiatric ward, Peking Union Medical College. Student, male, 15 years old. The patient sketched a portrait of himself as a character from an opera that he had seen performed on stage. Parents sent boy to the hospital for disruptive behavior. Diagnosis: manic depressive psychosis. Other patients, when offered ink and paper, did the same, drawing images of themselves as operatic characters. Patients in the elite Peking Union Medical College and in the city's police-run asylum also answered questions by deploying phrases from memorized dramatic scripts. When interviewed by attending physicians, patients acted out roles of famous characters, sang arias, narrated plot, executed hand gestures, performed hair manipulations, ritually tugged at their clothes and snapped their sleeves. All precise choreographies of the theater. Opera provided people with vivid language for articulating the emotions of everyday life. First as self-expression on the streets. And then, as a response to the probing curiosity of doctors inside the city's new hospitals, clearly that patients of the asylum imitated figures witnessed on the stage is not unique to China. The emulation of characters read about in fiction, heard from storytellers, observed in daily life, or later watched in film or on television, occurs cross-culturally and across time, even in conditions that appear shaped by genetic predisposition. Expressions of distress are sometimes explicitly impinged upon by transformations in the cultural environment. The proliferation of television channels is a vivid example. For people diagnosed with multiple personality disorder in Europe and in North America, Ian Hacking posits the connection between the spread of TV remote controls and the rapid switching of characters gleaned from television programs. The physician too offered patients models for imitation. Charcot's celebrated lectures on hypnotism in the 1880s hint at the influence of inadvertent clues on patient behavior. And elsewhere, we see catalepsy provoked by the abrupt sound of a tam-tam. Earlier in the 18th century, we witnessed the psychological contagion in the dramaturgy of the animal magnetists in Gassner and then in Mesmer. And earlier in antiquity, physicians in Greece exploited the healing power of dramatic suggestion. In the great medical center of Pergamon, theaters had a distinct therapeutic function. In the Asclepion, people seeking treatment consumed drugs and then traversed an underground passageway. As they walked the subterranean space in a reverie, from openings in the ceiling, healers called down the voices of the gods, whispering suggestively to the patients. In 20th century China, performance haunted public life. Take the self-fashioning militarist Yuan Shikai. Who dismissed in 1908 by the Qing court, retreated from official life, acting out the role of the Taoist hermit. In soundless protest, sitting chastely as a recluse on a river barge, wrapped in the bare straw cloak, he withdrew from the cynical world of politics. An act of self-abnegating dissent, silently condemning the regime. Later, in 1915, having crushed dissent within the embryonic republic. Yuan Shikai imitated the sacerdotal rituals of the Qing Imperium, riding tragic comically to the Temple of Heaven in an armored car to instate himself as emperor. His loyal officials, caught unprepared, hastily rented imperial-style costumes from local opera troops. But Yuan Shikai's antics obscure the gravity of public display. Performance in public threatened power. In 1930. Police strap a leather harness on the head of a communist suspect, who shortly after was executed. She was gagged to prevent the shouting of anti-government slogans, an idea rooted in the past, when the condemned being led to the execution grounds sang arias from the stage. There is an additional poignancy to patients emulating operatic characters in 1930s China. Patients imitated operatic figures who, on stage, in character, acted out madness. Yet within the plot, this madness was explicitly feigned. 
Among the great Milan Fang's most celebrated roles during the 1930s was acting out the feigned insanity of Miss Zhao in Yu Zhou Fang, The Sword of the Universe. Miss Zhao feigns madness to evade a hideous marriage, the ruse works. And some patients perform these roles with self-consciousness. The 15-year-old boy wrote these words on his self-portrait. In this world, there is feigned madness, but even more so because there is no one who understands me. In one sense, the new hospitals of early 20th century cities in China created new rhetorical platforms, affording novel stages for self-expression. Yet outside the clinic, stage drama would continue to haunt the imagination almost unlike any other form of cultural expression. Yes, it's true.